YouTube Oz it going. The Goat House is back. And College Football 25 releases next week, but the player ratings have released today. Something I'm very excited about. I thought it'd be a lot of fun to jump on here, talk about them, react to them with you guys. Also, you know, we are an NFL channel, so I thought I would talk about some guys to watch for on an NFL level who will transition the best uh, to the NFL game, who to watch for the NFL draft. So, a lot to talk about here. Really excited. Uh, so, this is overall rank. All, all players ranks there's a lot of players here listed uh we will also look at the players by position but will johnson michigan's corner comes in at number one not a surprise one of the very best players one of the very best defensive players in college football and should be when it comes to the nfl draft i love that will campbell's number two i'm a little surprised about that i mean i knew he'd be very highly rated i knew he'd be up there uh but i did not expect him to be number two but i think he should be number two i think he should be up there uh, because he's that good and watching uh, prospects for the last NFL draft, defensive prospects, edge rushers, he really stood out. Um, so I think even though he's a top college football player, that is a big one to watch. I think he could be even bigger as an NFL player, as a you know elite, uh, maybe an elite tackle in his future. So a player I'm really excited about, and Ollie Gordon dealing with a little bit of off the field issue, but what was one of the best playmakers of college football last year, James Pierce from Tennessee. Uh, yeah, really came out of nowhere, sort of, and then was um, you know big time edge rusher, and another one to watch for the NFL draft. But yeah, what was weird here, college football coming back this many years later and seeing a Tennessee defender at the top. Usually, you know, lately they've been known for their offensive players, so that was interesting. Uh, but yeah, a lot of players here. I, I, one guy that's been talked about a lot on Twitter already is Travis Hunter, him being the number six overall player. But I think what people are talking about mostly is him listed as receiver and we can filter here we can filter by position we'll go to receivers um apply and then we'll sort by rank and then yeah travis hunter is the number one overall receiver and then people kind of little salty a little mad about that but you have to remember how these video games work that he has cornerback ratings as well as part of his overall, as part of his rating. So um, he is a higher overall than some of his receivers, but is he as good of a receiver as Luther Burden, as McMillan, as Ibuka, um, you know, some of those Oregon receivers? Uh, is he as good of a wide receiver as those guys? The answer is no. You know, so that's kind of what, what is rubbing people the wrong way. But because he's such a good corner, and I, I think he's a better corner than receiver, so maybe he wanted to be listed as a receiver, but I kind of wish he was listed as a corner because uh, that makes a little more sense to me. But because he's so good at both and he has the high ratings for both and the player that he is, player that he can become, the athlete that he is, it kind of makes sense that he's that high of an overall, that high of a rank. But, yeah, kind of looking at some of these other receivers, uh, it shows kind of the top 10 list, I believe this is. Uh, but, yeah, Luther Burden was big time for Mizzou. People kind of give him Tyreek Hill-like comparisons, so that's one to watch for college football for the NFL draft as well. Uh, McMillan was big time last year. Arizona was pretty sneaky good. Uh, Igbuka just got to stay healthy, but he got to get separation. Uh, and then yeah, a couple Oregon Ducks that are standing out here, uh, Tez Johnson and Evan Stewart. Evan Stewart, the transfer from Texas A&M. So those guys, so two Oregon Ducks make the top 10 list here. Trey Harris I like a lot as well. Ole Miss, the way they finished Jackson Dart. Trey Harris looked really, really good. Harris really good on the boundary, you know, uh, down the field, really good hands, really good contested catcher. So, um, yeah, kind of want to touch on the receivers there. But let's go back to uh, the all the players, the, you know, the top overall guys. Let's sort it. Uh, yeah, so I just kind of want to touch on some guys. So, uh, yeah, there's Luther Burden. He's actually, we just touched on him, but he is the 11th overall ranked player. Um, our, the top running back was Ollie Gordon, but number two is see Judkins, the Ole Miss transfer to Ohio State, um, is number two. So not really a surprise there. Another corner in Benjamin Morrison. I did want to look at the corners, actually. We looked at the receivers um, because we were talking about Travis Hunter, how I think he should have been listed. I think he's a better corner, how he should have been listed as a corner. So here are your top ten corners. And so if... Travis Hunter was listed as a corner. He had, what, a 95 overall, so he would be number two there. That kind of makes sense. Uh, Benjamin Moore. Yeah, it's not really a surprise here. Will, Will Johnson and Benjamin Morrison 
uh, as the top two corners, Michigan, Notre Dame corners. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. You know, Hunter could be, if he was with the corners, he'd be number two. He'd be right there with those guys. And you got Takario Davis from Arizona, uh, Quincy Riley, Denzel Burke was a guy we thought would go to the NFL draft last year. Um, yeah, so there's your top corners. Uh, Oregon Duck, a transfer from Washington who made the national championship, Jabbar Muhammad. So that's one to watch as well, how good he was for Washington. Now going to actually probably a little bit better of a defense in Oregon um, and a really good defensive-minded coach in Dan Lanning. So that's a guy to watch too as well, um, possibly. But yeah, I, I do think there are guys that kind of separate themselves. Will Johnson, Benjamin Morrison, if you want to throw... Uh, Travis Hunter in here, and then Takario Davis and Denzel Burke. I think these are the guys mainly that are talked about when it comes to the NFL, like potential first-round picks next year. Uh, but I did want to touch on the corners because we did talk about uh, Travis Hunter there, who I think should be listed um, as a corner. I think he's really good there. I think he can be a first-round pick for a corner, but you can get creative with him. Um, so we left off at Benjamin Morrison, who was the uh, 12th-ranked overall player, number two corner. Um, and then Shadur Sanders, which we, so that'll kind of lead us to talking about the quarterback. So I think, yeah, people are, that's kind of the main talk, you know, with, um, the player ratings and, uh, even the team ratings that came out a couple weeks ago was Colorado, maybe being a little too high, but they could take that step up this year. Uh, but Shadur, we talk about Hunter Shadur Sanders, the number one overall quarterback, 17th ranked, so 17th overall player, and Carson Beck, who many thought would be the number one quarterback. They do have the same overall, but he is 18th, so they're back-to-back. So, yeah, maybe Sanders is a little high. Maybe it's a little, you could say, overrated, but he is very good. And think about the dual threat that he is and what he could become. That was the first year playing in FCS or FBS football last year, so, um, you know, coming from Jackson State, so... Think about upside. Think about progression. You know what he could be here, um, but yeah, maybe it's a little high. I, you know, I don't fully agree with these ratings, uh, but you know, it's not like they're too far off. I think most people would have Carson Beck too. People call Quinn Ewers overrated. I think he's very good. I'm su- I'm actually surprised he's not number one. Then Dylan Gabriel would be four, and Gabriel is a very good quarterback. Um. Is he the fourth best quarterback? That's where the, it's tough making these ratings. You know, do you, these ratings are kind of personal, like personal, like how these players play. I think Oregon elevates Dylan Gabriel better than what he is, even though he is very good. Um, you know, so in just terms of quarterback, who's strictly more talented? I would probably put a guy like Jackson Dart over him, uh, over Sanders as well. I like Jackson Dart a lot. I love the way he ended with Ole Miss. I think that's a kind of a sneaky Heisman candidate. I think people may kind of rip them for Jalen Milrow's rating, which is 90 overall, 71st rank, which I guess the rank isn't super high, but the fifth best quarterback. Uh, you know, because I, it seemed like Milrow got ripped a little bit at the end of last year, just not doing enough in the passing game. You know, look, he, you know, he got benched at one point end up being their best option so he came back in but I'd watch for him to have a much better season under DeBoer you know the Washington coach coming in there being the new Alabama coach you know being a really good X's and O's guy being you know that offensive mind you know what he did with the with the Washington offensive players uh, I think Milrow I think he's going to get more out of Milrow uh, he's going to be that dual threat guy so factor in that when it comes to ratings all the specific different ratings you know Milrow should be pretty high so at first glance like 90 He's got to do a lot more, it's true, but I think he's going to be very, very solid. But I do like Dart a lot, should be a lot higher. Jalen Daniels uh, from Kansas looked really good to start last year, uh, you know, before getting injured, another dual threat guy. So uh, that one should be pretty interesting. Does he get back on track? And then what's very interesting is Liberty has a quarterback, Caden Salter, which who, who we thought may transfer somewhere but did not did not do that, uh, Did not end, he didn't end up doing that. Um, a very good quarterback for Liberty. You know, does he does he deserve to be a 90 overall? Yes, but it is weird seeing a Liberty quarterback. Just think about when we last played college football. Um, you know, way back we didn't those schools that everyone wanted to use. You know, didn't have players ranked nearly that high. So this is going to be a lot different as you know a team like Liberty, who is good. You know, they go undefeated or you know they have seasons with one loss. You know, whatever, but. Uh, is there going to be, if you're playing a season or if you're simulating a season, is there going to be, you know, times where Liberty 
is really up there because they're 90 overall quarterback play. I think that's pretty interesting, but he is deserving of being that high. But back, once again, to uh, let's kind of focus on the overall. Where's the quarterback? There we go. Uh, overall player ratings again. Um, kind of stick to this. So guys, I just wanted to kind of point out, um, we talked about the quarterbacks. Um, and then the running backs, yeah, Omari and Hampton. I'm a huge fan of Omari and Hampton. I think he's a little bit closer to being one than where they have him. Well, what's the overall? Ollie Gordon is uh, 96 overall. I think Hampton's closer, 91. I think he's closer than people think. I like Hampton a lot. Especially that's, that's a running back to watch for the, for the next level. Could be that first running back drafted uh, when it comes to this next NFL draft, which running back class is looking pretty good. Could it, could it make a comeback? Uh, and then you have a second Ohio State running back, Travion Henderson. Uh, and there's another running back in Jaden Ott, who's a home run hitting back from California. A lot of good running backs here. Uh, just kind of want to see if anybody stood out. So there is Quinn Ewers, uh, whose overall rank is 27. I'm surprised not a little higher. Uh, Jack Sawyer from Ohio State, a guy that is very solid, but coming out of high school, a big name you know, we thought would be a little bit more by now. So is that a guy that really breaks out? And is that a guy that EA Sports is going to have to up his rating if he continues to play better? Um, I was a little surprised Harold Perkins was this low, 31 overall or 31 rank overall, 92. I think he's a better player than that, but maybe being an NFL guy, maybe I'm projecting the NFL level. I think he's going to be more of like a Micah Parsons type player at the next level. Could be more of an edge rusher where LSU uses him off the ball linebacker, which he is very, very, very good at. I think he's better than 92 overall at. Um, but if they were to use him more the proper way, maybe he'd be like a 98, you know, so like that good because he can be that good. So, But I was a little surprised. But then again, that kind of... You could argue it makes sense, but uh, because how LSU uses him. And there's your top tight end, Colton Loveland from Michigan. Um, yeah, I agree with him being the top tight end. Um, Malachi Moore, I'm surprised he's not a little higher. Uh, Taj Brooks, yeah, here's some more running backs I thought was interesting. Taj Brooks, who was really good for Texas Tech. Uh, and then you have Devin Neal for Kansas. Ashton Ginty, who was very productive for Boise State. Uh, but then you get down here to a cover athlete uh, in Donovan Edwards at 91 overall. And, yeah, he's the same overall as some of those guys, but I think he needs to be rated ahead. And I think maybe the issue was Blake, Blake Corum was the star running back for Michigan last year, but at times Edwards looked better, and I think there's actually a little bit more to his game, a little bit more of a home run guy. Uh, so I'm a little surprised. Like, these are really good running backs we talked about. I think Edwards, and there's a lot of Michigan guys rated high. We talked about Loveland being 92 overall, top tight end. We've touched on some other Michigan guys, number one overall player. But I think Edwards should be much much higher, actually. Um, so I was a little surprised about that. Abdul Carter is a guy to watch as well uh, for the NFL. Some off-the-field concerns. Uh, linebacker, edge rusher, hybrid. He's got a lot of upside. Um, so that's an interesting player um, as well. Um, let's go on to the see some guys I just want to highlight. Uh, Danny Stutzman, you know, captain for Oklahoma, was a fun watch last year. Kenneth Grant is one to watch. Uh, for the future, for like the long-term future, high upside guys, a freaky, freaky dude. Maybe um, not his name is hi not highlighted enough and because a star player like Mason Grant, but Kenneth Grant has potential to be much better. You know, maybe to be the best Michigan defensive lineman. Um, so his overall is 91. Uh, his rank is 55. And that's pretty fair based on where he is at now. But I think he, I think this guy can be so good. Like he has elite potential when it comes to the NFL. So that is one to watch for the future. A guy that I think people know his name. He plays for Michigan. He's a factor. He's a big freaky dude. But it's it's really one that probably isn't talked about enough. Probably because he's more of an upside, you know, a projection guy. Uh, and then you know, we see some receivers that we touched on already. Some Oregon Ducks that we touched on. Um, there's Milrow ends up being 71st overall. Jackson Dart ends up being 73rd. I think that's too low. Um, I, I'm a big Dart fan. I, I think he should be rated much higher. So he's a guy that ha could have his 90 overall boosted throughout the season. If, if EA Sports is doing that, I know they do with Madden. I don't really play Madden anymore. I kind of got old. But uh, then Mitchell Evans, another tight end, comes off the board here. Uh, Notre Dame's tight end who got injured at the end of last year. So we'll see how he recovers from that, but incredible hands. And we know Notre Dame kind of pumps out tight ends. So that is one to watch. Um, you know, Michael Mayer was known as, a, you know, the best Notre Dame tight end of all time, a much bigger name, but because Evans is, 
smooth route running and very, you know, just such a smooth tight end, like a pass catcher overall. Could he actually be more productive at the NFL level if he's if he's healthy than a guy like Mayer? Maybe that's a little bold, but that's something I could wa- I could see I could, you could watch for. So uh, that's another guy to watch. Um, um, let's see if there's any other guys I do want to talk about. We talked about Trey Harris I like uh, a lot. I like him. Uh, and then yeah, that is a very Texas A&M connection in a way. Evan Stewart, we talked about a little bit already. Uh, now Oregon's receiver transfer from Texas A&M. That's a guy to watch for the NFL as well. Tez Johnson, the other Oregon receiver who was there with Troy Franklin last year, maybe talked about a little bit more just because he was very productive from there last year. But Stewart... And Johnson could be the better college receiver. Stewart, I'd watch out for the NFL level. This guy has really good twitchy route running ability, an athletic freak. Uh, he gave Terry and Arnold Alabama's corner some some problems last year, and he was a first-round corner for a reason. So Stewart is one to watch. Texas A&M transfer to Oregon. Now we have a Texas A&M edge rusher that I think they're a little low on uh, in Nick and Nick Scarton, uh, who is a transfer from Purdue. So we got some transfers there, but that's a big physical defensive end that was super productive last year. I think he'll be very productive this year as well for AM. So that's one to watch for the NFL level. The teams that love the physical defensive ends, you know, and their 4 3 defense at the end of the NFL, I, I think uh, they'll like him as a potential first round player. Uh, some more LSU players. They got a lot on here. Oregon players. Oregon doesn't have a lot of players like in the top. Um, in the very top, I noticed, and when I first looked at the rankings, like top 20, I didn't, because Oregon's supposed to be a top three team or around there, but then this is where, yeah, they got balance. You start to see it, it really tallies up once you get down to the, in the top 100, a lot of 90 overall or just above players, um, and that there is your top 100 players there, um, you know, so a lot of 90, 90 plus overall players, but there really isn't a ton, let's see, at the very top, um, yeah, you only get 396, so there's no 97 until 100, no 99 overall we thought maybe we would get, so um, I think that's good. That's probably a good thing. There are a ton, maybe maybe a little bit too many, too much 90-plus uh, overall guys, though, but um, yeah, this is really cool layout, how, how they had it. Any other positions we want to look at? Looked at um, corners, we looked at maybe... Um, Edge, we'll look at left and right defensive ends here. Yeah, James Pierce at the top. Deion Walker, uh, 21. Yeah, a lot of these guys, you know, if we're looking in terms of, uh, yeah, I'm surprised uh, Scarleton is down at the bottom there. I thought he'd be a little higher, but again, I project to the NFL a lot. I think he'll end up projecting or uh, being a better, translating, I should say, um, a little better than quite a few of these guys but uh Sawyer is kind of that mystery still he's been good but a little underwhelming but still has a ton of upside um yeah in terms of the NFL uh, James Pierce Abdul Carter um, you know those guys re- really stand out on the top for me uh, I guess we didn't really touch on we didn't touch on a lot of positions but uh I kind of I was very curious about the safeties I don't think we touched on any safeties really so Strong and free safeties. And where we go? Sort them by rank. Caleb Downs transfers to Ohio State at the top. Starks. Yeah, uh, that's debatable, I suppose. Like, you could argue either way. Then Xavier Watts who from Notre Dame who uh, led college football in interceptions. Uh, he created a bunch of turnovers. He, he uh, gave Caleb Williams the top overall pick from last draft. A lot of problems. So you see a lot of good free safeties here. Moore, Castro. Uh, Winston might be a little low. Kevin Winston Jr. from Penn State. I mean, 91's a pretty high overall. 57 overall rank. You probably can debate him in that three safety spot. So maybe he's a little low. Uh, but Iowa, they got a couple guys on here known for their defense and their specifically their zone defense. And that really there's more and more zone coverage every year in the NFL. That's kind of the way the NFL is leaning. So those guys really translating and getting drafted pretty high. So maybe some guys to watch um, in terms of that position. Uh, and I, we, we don't want to sit here all day and look at this stuff, but you guys can go look as well. But I want to, I want to look at uh, defensive tackles, very important position these days, especially in the NFL. So, um, Mason Graham at the top, Walter Nolan, another one that it was a transfer for Ole Miss. Could be Ole Miss could be a sne- sneaky good team here this year. Uh, Talik Williams, Kenneth Grant, 
yeah, Howard Cross, another you know long time Notre Dame player, very good. His not his play style, like if you watch him play, it's like okay, this guy is kind of a big time player, future first round pick. The knock is he's a little undersized, so that could kind of be the worry there for looking at the NFL level. But in terms of talent, um, yeah, it's definitely there. But Kenneth Grant to me is the one to watch. This guy has the most upside of all these guys. Um, if you if you're an NFL guy or an NFL draft guy projecting uh, for the future. Um, but yeah, this is something I just thought it would be fun to kind of jump in, in here on here and, and talk about, um, we talked about the running backs a little bit, but I kind of want to look again, Ollie Gordon, Judkins, Hampton. I'm a huge Hampton guy, huge Hampton guy. I'm surprised Edwards is down that list a little bit higher overall 91, but I'm, I'm a little surprised. A lot of running backs on here. Um, a lot of random ones, kind of, but yeah, there are the bigger names at the top. I'm surprised Edwards isn't. I would have guessed fourth, actually, maybe even ahead of Henderson, just because those guys up there are splitting. I thought Hampton would be number two after Gordon. I think he should be. Um, it's it's a really good running back group. I think Ollie Gordon. To me, Ollie Gordon and Hampton they highlight it for me. Uh, and then looking at Gordon's the best one for college football. Could be the best one for the NFL. I look at Hampton for the best one for the NFL. Edward. Some people kind of worry about off the field things or you know a little little bit I've heard, um, but he can translate very nicely to the NFL because he can run routes very good, get the ball downfield. Um, but yeah, a lot of good backs to watch. Miami could be a sneaky team that they got. Um, you know, so oh, yeah, I was surprised Cam Ward wasn't on there either for quarterbacks. Yeah, we looked through Cam. They got Cam Wards and they got some playmakers. I was surprised that we didn't see him on there. But that'll wrap it up for this one. Just something I thought would be really fun to talk about. But we have a series going on covering each NFL team. They each get their own uh, video. So we've been getting through that. There's a playlist on the channel and then more of the kind of preseason predictions videos on the way after that. So check all that out. Check us out on Twitter, Liquid IV, our sponsor code GOAT for percentage off. Links pinned in the comments for anything you look forward to. going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.